Uh, thank you very much. Excited to be here for this uh, memorable, memorable evening for, for all of the class inductees and for the Lester Patrick Award winners. I'm thankful for the committee, and I know in these uh, polarized times across America, where there's divisiveness, I hope there's no recount. The lighting's bad up here because there's such bright lights that I can't see my notes, so bear with me. It gets hot up here, maybe Steve could lend me a scarf. <laughs> Just want to thank all the people that uh, came tonight. Um, certainly is a full house and lots of family and friends and former teammates, line mates, defense partners, uh, uh, former opponents, former players, and most importantly, friends and family. That's awfully nice uh, words from uh, Lou Vero. And in, in fact, uh, tonight I'm, I'm wearing a special tie. Uh, I wore this tie when Lou was inducted four years ago in Minnesota. And it was a huge audience that night. And I remember walking around and saying hi to people and was actually having a good time, unlike tonight, having to get up here and do this. <laughs> so I ran into a guy who had the same tie. 500 people in the hall, only two guys have the same tie. The, the other gentleman was a fellow by the name of John Mayasich. And I think the people from Eveleth know that name. And if you, don't, if you don't know that name, if you don't know that name, then you're probably too young. But uh, John Mayasich in Minnesota is to what Bill Cleary is in Massachusetts. Um, I consider them both Roy Hobbs. I think those two guys can walk down the street and people can point to them and say, there goes the best hockey player America ever produced. So this real honor to be wearing that tie tonight. I'm really excited that uh, my wife Julia is here tonight. Uh, she uh, met my mom back a few years ago, and the first time she met, I remember mom saying uh, the next day, wow, she's a good eater. <laughs> and in, in our family, that's as high a compliment as you can achieve. <laughs> but, but she also said, um, she speaks your language. So I feel very, very fortunate to have somebody that can understand me because I'm, as some of my former players could probably tell you, especially the women, I don't think they knew half, half the time what I was saying, which is probably why they were so successful. <laughs> and it's one of the differences that I noticed with men and women's hockey. Get that question for the last 20 years. The one big difference that was so scary is that the women would listen. So you could go into a men's locker room and go, we gotta get the backside wing doing this, we gotta do this, we gotta change faster, we gotta do this, gotta do that. You walk out of the room, the players all throw the tape down, but they're not paying a goddamn bit of attention. But you say one thing to the women and they take it to heart. So I just stopped going in the dressing room. <laughs> and things seem to turn out all right. But, uh, I'm so appreciative of my wife Julie's patience with me and I just know that uh, choosing the right partner makes all the difference. And I'm also thrilled to have my daughter Kaz here tonight. Um, she's been on this hockey journey with me for a long, long time. She's had a lot of bumps and she's shared the bumps and bruises, she's shared the slings and arrows, the wins, the losses, the tears, Allie, Jackie, you know what I'm talking about, you were there. You, you get the picture. Yes, we see. Um, so, Kaz, I'm just so thrilled that you're here tonight to see some of the mutton heads I put up with all my life. <laughs> I love you, Kaz. Jack was talking about family earlier, and if you look at the, one of the, almost the middle page of the program, it gets the list of the, of the previous inductees. And I'm always struck by the number of brothers 
Uh, and now, as we move into the future, we're going to have brothers and sisters, uh, because I think Cami Granado is already in the, in the hall, and I, I know her brothers are, will be banging on the doors pretty soon. So it's, 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 it's a sport that really does seem to have an abundance of family uh, uh, ties. And I guess because we all have to you know, uh, get a pair of skates, we're very dependent upon mom and dad. And it's, 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 it's something that just permeates the, that, that feeling that I think Jack was talking about, about, about family and, and, and how special hockey is. It's a, it's, it's a close-knit group. And all we yell and scream at each other, you know, we scream at the odd referee or the odd coach. And when we're players, we get very involved and, and, and it gets heated. But, uh, you know, I see guys like Steve Cedarchuk and Paul Schilling here tonight from Boston College. And, you know, I'm just glad to see him. I wasn't glad to see him 45 years ago, but, but it's, it's part of the deal that you know what they went through and they know what I went through. And that's part of the, that, that's part of the sport that I think is so, so great. And I was lucky to come out of a family where I had loving parents, mom, mom and dad, both great athletes. My mom skated uh, at a very early age at the Winter Club in Lake Forest, Illinois, with her three brothers that all went on to St. Paul's School and played at Harvard. And my dad played football in college, and so between the two of them, they were just outstanding athletes. And they included all of us all the time. All of my, I've got an older brother, Russ, who's here tonight, and I've got three sisters. Uh, one's passed away, and she was probably the best skater, of the uh, best player of the five of us. But we all got to play tennis together, we all got to skate, we all got to shovel the pond, we all got to play football in the front yard, and we had a great backyard that uh, a lot of people call Ipswich Bay. <laughs> and we sailed and sailed together and had great times. So really lucky to come from the family that I came from. And Russ, he just, uh, he was my idol. He's six years older, so we never really had to compete against each other, but uh, he would be instructing me. He would be uh, including me. He would make sure that when the cousins came over that they were all his age and maybe a little bit older, but I was one of those outliers. I was a January birthday, and I was 5'10", 165 pounds in the sixth grade, so I was, could kind of fool people to think that I was older, but I was able to, able to play because Russ included me. So I really, really looked up to him, and he really guided me and set me on a path to Gloucester High to play football and hockey and on to Harvard to play uh, football and hockey there. So, Russ, I'm glad you're here. Thanks so much for everything you've done for me. So those early years took me through uh, into, into the next phase of my life and my journey, and it has been a hockey journey. Uh, I ran into the next part of my, uh, of my winding road was running into Tim Taylor and, and hooking up with him. And, and then, uh, you know, I felt like I was getting a, a master's degree in coaching. And then I, after five years at Yale, I moved on to Boston University with Jack and just had a Fabulous, uh, fabulous time coaching with him. We became great friends, and I felt like I got a doctorate there at Boston University. And, you know, Louis was giving me some real nice uh, uh, credit there tonight about the East and the West, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I know where I got uh, kind of a stamp of approval by people nationally in the sport was because they figured this guy Smith is, if he'd been around Tim Taylor and Jack Parker, he's got to be a pretty square shooter, so I, I really appreciate what those guys uh, were able to uh, uh, put, the, put their stamp of okay on my forehead. And uh, then the next, uh, next avenue was uh, running into one of my dear friends, Art Berglund. And Art's here tonight with his lovely wife, Char, and our taxi driver, Merv Lappin, flew him in from, uh, from Colorado Springs. And I knew Art's gone through a kind of a tough uh, surgical procedure with a fall and when he fell down and broke his hip. But I know wild horses couldn't keep him away. And uh, that's, that's the type of guy Art was. And Art was the guy that got me into the, into the next phase, which was the, uh, the international game. And, and I got to work with him with junior teams and national teams on the men's side, Olympic team in 1988. And actually with Scotty Young, I got to coach him in the World Junior Championships at BU and with the uh, 88 Olympic team in Calgary. And I was the guy that probably ruined his uh, year of 88 because I put him back on defense. But I hope that that didn't uh, slow him down because he seemed to have a pretty good career in spite of Parker and Smith. <laughs> um, so Art was the guy that uh, was steering me in the right direction. It's so great to see you here, Art. 
And while Walter Bush, uh, you know, the great hockey I American icon, was kind of the uh, moving force for women's hockey to, to enter into the Olympic Games, um, it was really Art and Dave Ogren who were the architects of that, of that 98 team. And, and, and that was a special team. I mean, I just kind of stepped into the, into the right spot there because I, I inherited great athletes and uh, people that were just so dedicated to the sport at, at every level because they were such well-rounded athletes. I think that's, they were all multi-faceted multi, multi players. And we had uh, great goaltending, a pair of great goaltenders. We had great uh, defenders. We had four equal lines. We had a great leadership with, with, great leadership with Cami Granado as our captain. Uh, uh, Mr. Tom Much was uh, our assistant coach. Uh, that was uh, just a tremendous uh, uh, part of that program. Uh, David mentioned the Peter Harborough story, our psych doctor, we used to call him, and that almost brought tears to my eyes early on in the evening. And I, I know that we had uh, a great team leader with Amy Hillis, and I know a great doctor with my good friend Brad Stevens is out in the Pacific Northwest. And Peter, and I'm, and I'm, it's a problem when you start naming names, and obviously the man for all seasons, Bobby Webster, helped put that team together, and it was just a, you know, just a culmination of a lot of work by a lot of people, but mostly by those great athletes. And in the sports world today, or every day, you always hear coaches talking about execution, execution, execution. I remember the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers coach, John McKay, after he lost his 13th game in a row, the reporter said, Coach McKay, what do you think of your team's execution? He paused and he said, I'm all for it. <laughs> well, after we, after we won the gold medal, after we won the gold medal in Nagano, the great uh, Canadian coach, Claire Drake, who was the mentoring coach for the Canadian program, came up to me afterwards and said, Coach, we played you guys 15 times. So you had no surprises for us. You just out-executed us. And that was a tribute to those players. And before I go, I just want to let you, I, I want to make sure that people always have the correct outlook of that 98 team. It burns my ass when somebody says that was, an ups, you know, it was a big gold medal upset in Nagano, Japan. That was no upset. That was no upset. That's, that's not fair to the Canadian team, and that's not fair to the American team. We played that team 13 times in the fall and early winter of that 97-98 season. And we headed into Nagano after 13 games. They had won seven and we'd won six. And we met him in the, in the round robin, we beat him, and then we beat him in the gold medal. So we won the goddamn gold medal and we won the series eight to seven. <laughs> For those of you who are scoring it at home. <laughs> um, it's been a, quite a journey that I've had with this hockey business, and um, I want you all to pay attention for the next 60 days what we're doing at USA Hockey. We've got the World Juniors coming up, and we've got the Olympic Games in uh, South Korea. I'll be helping with the junior team in Buffalo, and I'll be with Jim Johansson in South Korea. And I want to thank the, the uh, Hall of Fame. I want to thank you all here. And uh, believe me, the journey's not over.